What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys. We're going to start doing these videos a lot more frequently as well. So if you guys are enjoying this, let me know in the comment section below. I'll try and respond to as many of you guys as possible. If you guys don't and you just want me to F off back to streaming, that's fine as well. You lot can tell me to do that. Just let me know in the comment section below. We're going to be talking about Jao Felix. We're going to be talking about Graham Potter as well because... Seems like player power is starting to rear its ugly head in this club yet again. Shock and horror, but we'll get into that. Before we do, as always, need to do a little bit of housekeeping. I just need to remind you guys, if you haven't done so already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We are on the road to 30k and we're starting to make progress as well. So we need every single one of you guys to be on it. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Press the bell notification button if you're feeling extra generous and you guys want um, to know whenever we release anything on this channel. Hit the bell notification button. There's a super thanks option as well if you guys want to donate. I'm not going to tell you guys to. If you want to though, would be nice. And yeah, like, subscribe, all of that. Check out Jerseys FC down in the description below for all your best affordable football kits. And use the code CAREFREELEWISG for 20% off. And yeah, let's get into Jao Felix, who's that just came up out of nowhere in the middle of the stream earlier today. Um, we knew there was links with Jao Felix. We didn't know how concrete they were or how far Chelsea would go in terms of pushing for the player. But turns out we look like we're going to be the front runners for him. Um, David Ornstein has said Chelsea reached a verbal agreement to sign Jao Felix on loan from Atletico Madrid. The fee is 11 million euros, which is below the initial amount that Atletico's asked for. And United and Arsenal were keen, so the 23-year-old had the choice. And he picked Chelsea's project instead. Like, I don't know if that's a good thing or not with him being on a loan, but he picked Chelsea over a title race with Arsenal. He picked Chelsea over a top four race of Man United and pushing for the Europa League. That is positive. That is very positive. Who knew Graham Potter had pulled like that? I prefer really not to speak. But, yo, if we're getting Jao Felix in and he has chosen the trenches over being at, in the top of the league or going to Manchester United and potentially stat padding a Europa League, fair enough. Fair enough. That says a little bit about your mentality as well. So, you know what? Welcome to the trenches, my guy. We have nothing here. We have no service for you. We have no forward passing. We have no clinical finishers. We have Thiago Silva and the remains of Reese James. But big up yourself and welcome, welcome to the trenches, my guy. Um, a deal hasn't been signed, but the Premier League side are expected to pay 11 million, again, below what their La Liga counterparts wanted. Chelsea and Atletico are now competing the final details. And we're looking to get sorted this week, according to Fabrizio Romano. Could potentially have him for the Fulham game. Potentially. Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to jump to too many conclusions. I also don't want to get too gassed, like we've done all the time when we've made high-profile signings. We have gassed it up. And when I'm looking at Jao Felix, there's positives. Obviously, he gives us some aspect of creativity. He will pass forward a little bit more than the likes of Kai Havertz will. He has a better finishing technique than probably most of our forwards as well. And there are aspects that would greatly improve us. But the state of Chelsea is, is so low right now that I can barely gas myself up for this. I'm just thinking, this is great, but there's no right back. There's no midfield. There's barely any competent strikers. I mean, the only one that we have that's competent looks like he's going to be on his way out. And he ain't even been all that for us this season in Aubameyang. So we are a mess from top to bottom. And I keep saying no one signing is going to change any of that. I do think, though, him being a short-term loan, it's smarter on our end. I, I would have liked there to be a buyout clause or for there to be... Um, an option to buy or potentially an obligation to buy because then that, then there's at least something in the long term about this. But it does also mean if the player does flop, if he doesn't really do anything in the time that he spends it, 
just send them straight back to Atletico and we can forget it ever happened. It'll be like Alexandra Pato or Gonzalo Higuain or something along the lines of that. Um, we do need creativity. He brings that to us. But it's also been questioned a little bit. His creativity has come into question. His attitude, his consistency has all come into question over the last year in Atletico Madrid. And Atletico Madrid aren't really the most creative of sides either. They're not really the most attacking of sides either. Felix, though, is their only spark of creativity in that team. So, could he be the one to carry this attack on his back and lead us forward into potentially a better next season? I was going to say top four, but we've thrown that in the bin over the last month or so. But maybe he'll give us a better end to the season. I don't know. But I do think potentially in the long term it might be better for us. I, I just don't want us to do this whole Felix Havertz mount sort of bollocks that I've been hearing about. Because when we were initially linked with Felix, those were the rumours that were coming out. That we were going to be playing Felix on the wing and we were going to be playing Havertz up top. Felix likes to play his best football in the middle from what I've seen, from what I've researched about him. And play him on the wing to accommodate for a player in Kai Havertz who has been absolutely atrocious for us for the best part of two and a half seasons is not the right move. You should be playing Felix against Kai Havertz. I would be using this to say to Kai, you see this guy right here? That's your replacement if you don't pattern up immediately. Then you just see who performs better out the two of them. Do you light a fire up Kai's ass? Or does he crawl back into his shell and then start going in interviews talking about how if the fans know what my best position is. I'm a 9, I'm a 10, I can play on the wing, I can play anywhere in the front. No, we just need to see who's better out of the pair. Pick the winner and the loser can duck out. Whether it's back to it, let's go back to Germany, wherever, whenever, I don't care. But I think Felix should be played more centrally. In a dream scenario, you'd have maybe the likes of Pulisic or Sterling on either side of the wings. But both are injured right now. Which is, again, why I was saying the state that Chelsea are in right now. I'm not even that excited. But who knows? Felix might be a decent addition to Chelsea Football Club. He might just be. We will have to wait and see. But as far as things stand right now... Welcome to the trenches, my guy. Welcome to the trenches. I want to talk about this Graham Potter stuff just before I wrap up. Um, Sammy Mockbell and Matt Hughes from the Mail have said that they understand that there's concerns behind the scenes about the players not buying into Graham Potter's methods. However, Chelsea Chiefs are understanding of injuries and feel the squad is unbalanced, a.k.a. The players are trying to get another manager out of the job. They don't understand his methods. There's a question about the mentality of these players. No, we know what it is. We don't need to go round in circles repeatedly. We have been here so many times. It is the squad. I've said it numerous times. The manager is not my problem. Not until we back him with the right additions. And Potter don't like this squad either. It was reported by the same sources that Potter does not see some players as part of his Chelsea plan. Most are on big salaries and will be hard to move on. So all you have to really look at is our highest earners and you could go lower from that. I could easily see him not being keen on the likes of maybe a Koulibaly potentially. Probably because of the age factor and the fact he hasn't adapted yet. Maybe... Um, a Jorginho, Havertz, Mount, maybe Sterling, maybe Sterling, um, maybe N'Golo. Who else is in there? I don't know. Just off the top of my head, I can't remember. But there is a clear rebuild that is going to be done. So I'm not listening to this crap about the players don't really buy into Potter's methods. I don't buy into the players. I don't buy into the hype that surrounds them by player stands. They are the issue. Our midfield can't create anything. Our midfield gets ripped apart by any midfield semi-competent. Our tens don't create. Our attackers get no service. Our defence has even looked shakier this season. And that was our only saving point. There is nothing. There is absolutely nothing. So rip the whole thing up and start again. We have allowed mentality issues to be the one thing that has been the fall of most of our managers. This has been questioned since Mourinho days. It's, it's time for change and it's time for actual change. Not just change the manager at the top, change the roots. 
Change the players. They are the ones that are the problem. They are the ones that are holding us back. So until that changes, nothing else will change in the squad. Graham Potter needs to be backed before he gets properly judged. I don't think we're going to sack him. But the fact that players are starting to have issues with his methods only shows that player power is trying to rear its ugly head around again. But this time, it's a different ownership. Bowley ain't falling for it the same way Roman would have. Bowley won't be as trigger happy. So those players that don't buy into his methods, those players that don't rate Potter and don't rate his methods, can leave. Get out of the club. Find another manager who you can rate or who you can run rings around. But you ain't going to find it here anymore because the manager here is actually going to get backed. Big up everybody that's locked in though. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, links to everything is down in the description below. I've been Carefree Lewis G and peace.